Hello, this is Kate. Has been long. The first AA and AI uh, new IB Math syllabus exam is coming. It's like in a month time. Uh, so I figure I'm gonna do the latest IB paper to hopefully help you prepare a bit. So we're not sure if they're gonna continue the trend uh, of making SL harder. This paper in particular is not easy at all, especially the last question, question 10. That will be in the other video in section B. Uh, but that question, in my opinion, that's ridiculous. Okay, it's a ridiculous question. When I tell you the solution, it's not like there contains any crazy math. It's not difficult, but what they want you to do is so unpredictable that like even I got to think about, I mean, like, what do you want? Like, why would I suddenly do something like this? And that is exactly what you have to do. So hopefully this doesn't mean AAS are going to be uh, this difficult. But we have to prepare for the worst. Okay, let's get started. So the first question uh, shouldn't be hard. There are 30 students. 19 of them play tennis. So this whole circle have 19 people. So it should be obvious immediately that T must be 16 because 16 plus 3 is 19. So T is 16. And then 3 play both. That's why the three here and six don't do anything. Question is what's V? Well, the total number of people is 30. So if I do 16 plus three plus V plus six, I need to get 30. So uh, you should have some basic mental math ability. 16 plus three is 19 plus another six, 25. And so V is five. Okay. Find the probability that someone selected at random play either tennis or volleyball but not both so that's obviously that's obviously this plus this so that was 16 plus 5 over the total number of people 30 so that's 21 over 30 so we cancel that's 7 over 10 if you simplify it with 3 so as expected first question should not be difficult Okay, a psi root cos root type of question. Right, I got we got some lengths. Angle A B C is theta. Now I'm not sure if you guys see this this symbol, this hat over there means angle. Okay? So angle A B C, so it's this one. You also know that if you sign C A B, so if you sign this one, it's with three for three find sine theta, okay? This should at least be recognizable as a psi root question. So go to the formula bullet, find psi root. You should see a over psi a equals to b over psi b. There's a c, but we always ignore c. We do two at a time and remember your ABC doesn't have to be the ABC that your question is giving it to you. You can change the name. And again, small letters are length, capital letter are angles, and small letter and the corresponding capital letter are opposite to each other. So for example, this time we're gonna call 15 little a, then theta is our big A, okay, the opposite. And then maybe this angle, would be our capital B, then 10 would be a little b. Okay, so 15 over psi theta equal to 10 over psi, the angle that we call B, but the angle that we call B is actually C, A, B. Well, we know psi C, A, B is root 3 over 3. That's given in the question. To solve this, we do something called cross multiply. We multiply the denominator to the top of the right and multiply this denominator 
to the top of the left. 15 times root over 3 equals to 10 sine theta. The 15 and the 3 cancel out, so it's a 5. And then you multiply. When you multiply fraction, you multiply the top to the top only. And you multiply the bottom to bottom, but now the 3 is cancelled. When you cancel it, it becomes 1, so 1 times 1 is just 1. Over 1, you don't have to write it. And then we divide both sides by 10. 5 and 10 again cancel out, so sine theta is root 3 over 2. Okay. And then B, B wants cosine 2 times of CAB. Then uh, the key is, this is this angle. And you see 2 times the angle, so hopefully that ring the bell of doing cosine double angle formula. So obviously you go to the formula booklet to find the double angle formula. You should see that there are three choices. So it's cosine squared minus i squared or two cosine squared minus one or one minus two sine squared x. Which one do we use? Depends on information you're given. Well, you're given sine. You're given sine x basically. So we'll do the option that only contains sine because we only know sine, okay? We don't know cosine. So it's one minus two sine squared x. So in particular, if x is CAB, angle CAB, then it is one minus two times of sine square angle CAB. And the question is given that sine CAB is root two over three. So sine CAB is root three over three. And square, the Mr. Square. Maybe I should go thicker. So there's a square. So we square that. When you square a fraction, you square both the top and the bottom. When you square a square root, they cancel out. So it's three. Three square is nine. So nine. Three over nine, a third. Okay. 2 times a third, 2 is 2 over 1, you multiply top to dot, bottom to bottom, so we got 2 over 3, 1 minus 2 over 3, 1 over 3. Okay, that's the answer. B. Uh, now the thing is, the volume of revolution is not in the AASL new syllabus. Okay, so if you're watching this to prepare for AASL, uh, you should skip this. On the other hand, to find A should be, uh, shouldn't be difficult to find the X intercept. You make Y to be zero. Y means FX. Okay, so to get rid of the square root, you square both sides. Zero square is still zero. So 2x is 12, x is 6, so a is 6. Well, since at the time I'm preparing this video, I don't think any of you would be prepping for the old syllabus, just impossible. So uh, I'll skip part B. Okay. A lock, they give you a point, want you to find a, so obviously you sub in the point. So 13 is x. And y is 7. 30 minus 4, 9. Okay, so log 9 base 3. You should know that's 2. The reason is log 9 base 3 is asking you 3 to the power of what would give you 9. 3 to the power of what gives you 9, so the answer is 2. Okay. 3 to the power of 2 give you 9. So therefore A would be 7 over 2. To tell you the x-intercept is 5, 0. Draw the graph. So obviously the graph need to pass through 5, 0. Obviously the graph need to pass through 13, 7. Okay. The only thing that you need to know, that you also need to know is the vertical asymptote of log. 
in simple terms, the vertical asymptote of a log is when the thing inside the log equals zero. So when x minus four equals zero, so x would equal to four. So the vertical asymptote is at four. And obviously you should know the shape of a log graph, look like this. This is the shape when the base of the log is bigger than one, which it is. Oh no, sorry, A is not the base, three is the base, three is bigger than one, okay? Well, have the base been less than one, the log graph would look like that, okay? But then obviously then it wouldn't pass through that two points, so yeah. Okay, you saw a quadratic, quadratic with no real root, so it should already ring the bell of discriminant. Okay, to have no real root, the discriminant of a quadratic should be less than zero. Okay, so it's probably that, but to make sure, let's make sure gx would eventually be a quadratic, uh, which it should be because gx is just the negative of fx plus k, so that should still be a quadratic. You put in the negative, 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 positive, minus 4x, minus 5, plus k. So a quadratic has no real root, the discriminant should be less than zero. If you don't remember the discriminant, it is in the form of booklet, it's b squared minus 4ac. So we want b squared minus 4ac to be less than zero. b, b is the coefficient of x, so it's this. It doesn't include the x, okay? Well, a, a is the coefficient of x squared, so in this case it's 1. C is whatever at the back with no x. So this whole thing is C. Okay. So we just uh, square this. Negative 4 square is 16. Because the negative is also square. Negative, negative, positive. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative times negative is positive. So it's plus 20. Okay. And then negative 4 times k is minus 4k. Okay, be careful with the sign. So we add 36. We move the 4k to the right. Divided by 4. Okay, so far so good, okay? I don't see anything uh, particularly difficult yet. Uh, which is usual, okay? That's normal. That's a good thing, okay? Six. Six is also not particularly difficult. They give you the derivative, finding the original function. So it should be uh, quite obvious that you integrate. So fx would be the integral of the derivative. You integrate this, you probably learn this as reverse chain rule. Six is a coefficient, doesn't do anything. If you integrate e, you get the same thing. But due to reverse chain rule, you need to one over the coefficient of x. So you times 1 over 2 in this case. Don't forget the plus c, so plus c. So half times 6, 3. If the question asks you to find a function, you need to find c as well. And that's what this point is for. You sub it in. Okay, now this is a sixth question, so there should be a little bit of difficulty, okay? So this time, the difficult part is this. You need to figure out the value of e to the power of a log. So if you check the formal bullet under topic two function, you should see the formula that e to the power of ln x it's just x, okay? Well, this is true because e, uh, as in exponential function, e to the power of x, is the inverse function of l and x. Therefore, in some sense, they cancel out. Therefore, if you have e to the power of log x, you just get x, okay? Uh, but if you don't really understand that, you can just use it as a formula. It's in a booklet. 
Now the problem is though, in order to use this formula, you cannot have a number in front, which we have. We have a two in front. So instead of directly apply the formula, you have to move the number two into the log. So that's where you use the other identity, the other property of log, which is if you have a number in front, you can move it up as a power. Again, that's in the formula book, but it shouldn't be strange to you, okay? So we do that. So, so we move the two up as a power. So four square is 16, and therefore by this rule, e to the power of log 16 is just 16. So this is 16. 3 times 16, 48, you minus negative 28. Okay, take your time with your manual math, but uh, I wouldn't show you how to subtract, okay? Okay, 7. Uh, so this is supposed to be a kind of difficult question in this paper. Sad thing is, uh, vector vector is not in the syllabus of AASL anymore so you wouldn't be able to appreciate why this question is difficult uh, the only thing I want to mention is if they give you the displacement to find the velocity you differentiate it okay so V V is ds dt so differentiate this, differentiate 10 is zero. Differentiate this, the coefficient you copy. Differentiate t squared, you get two t. So you multiply the two to the seven over four. Again, two is two over one. You multiply top to top, bottom to bottom. So it's negative 14 over four t. Simplify by two, so seven over two. That's the velocity. Wow, we're in section B already. Uh, but I think I would cut the video here. In case you're really early, uh, it'll be coming, okay? Probably tomorrow, okay? Wait for it, I'll see you there.